one of my really big reasons for starting to do a YouTube channel is I hurt myself in July and I ended up on the couch for three months, stressed out, bored out of my mind, but we knew we were going to be buying property. So I started watching YouTube channel videos, uh, kind of obsessively actually. I was trying to figure out, and my mindset was, okay, so what is it that everybody else has done wrong? And then if they're doing that wrong, then I won't make their same mistakes. Because I know I'm going to make mistakes, I just don't want to make the same mistakes they're making. And it was frustrating to me because everybody, everywhere you went, you see these perfect chicken coops. And they say, oh yeah, my first batch of chickens died. And I'm like, well, what'd you do to them? Because I don't know why they died. And that's just the kind of stuff I kept finding. And, you know, here's our soil and we've gotten it so fabulous. And, well, why'd you do that to the soil? What happened to start with to make you realize I need to fix this? What what was the errors in the process? And then even when I started thinking of YouTube channels, you go in and they don't actually show the struggles and the mistakes and this is what I did wrong and that's what I did wrong and wow, that was a mistake. Like when I opened my Facebook page up, the very first thing I did when I started inviting people was I accidentally logged into my old Facebook page that I used exclusively for work and invited a handful of people and then instantly realized this isn't the page I'm going to use so then I go into the other page that I'm going to use that's my real one and then I'm like oh well now I have all these people invited and I have to sort of uninvite them from the other one and invite them from this page and then I'm like calling people I know like sorry so this is about the process, but also making sure that you guys see the mistakes I make. And this is a learning process. And I think a lot of times we miss the learning part because we just skip over the mistakes. And that's something I want to really focus on. So all that being said is this is actually my first video that I'm creating. Um, I'm going to try really hard to edit it, but I'm actually going to leave in most of it because I just rewatched all my bits and pieces and quite frankly it's kind of funny and messy and going forward it should be quite prettier because I'm ordering you know uh, something to hold my camera and something that's so things look a little nicer um, so we'll see hopefully you guys enjoy it so as So I've shared a bunch that I'm planning on doing a whole lot with this property and this house and oh geez, the plans are crazy big. One of the things we want to do is we have a little piece of land off to the side of the house that has, it's just tall grass and stuff growing and there's an awful lot of little forested areas around us and we kind of want to bring it back to that. And the area right now has tons of birds and we've got blue jays and we've got uh, woodpeckers and cardinals and um, bluebirds and um, we just there's so many birds here and a lot of them I don't even know and I'm learning because we're really new to the area and so the first thing we're going to do towards making that area more natural while we turn the rest of it more into a farm area is actually we're going to plant wildflower seeds in that area and I just learned that the best way to plant good wildflower seeds is to scatter it in the winter let it snow on it and then it'll naturally propagate and you have a better chance of having more butterflies and the insects that the birds like to eat so today we're going to go on a little field trip um, Buttercup and I are going to go on a little trip and go get some bird seed. Buttercup and I are going to go on a little trip and we're going to get wildflower seeds and probably bird seed because I am really enjoying watching the birds out the window. And we even saw turkey yesterday going by, which this is just crazy to me to see so much wildlife and um, just so tightly packed in such an area like this. It's awesome. It's just, it's neat. So if everyone, anyone ever doesn't believe me that my dog is very pushy, she is really offended 
that I have this soda bottle. She wants to play with it and chase it, which is fine, except she likes to do that to the tops, which the plastic's not good for her. And so she is shoving my phone out of the way to try to get to the soda bottle because the soda bottle is apparently more important than anything in the world. So there you go. Little Miss Innocence being a nightmare. So we went on our field trip to try to find bird seed. And surprise, surprise, the beginning of January is not the best time to find bird seed. Buttercup was wildly busy, so I didn't really uh, take any time to video anything because keeping her out of trouble in a store was, uh, well, let's just say she was a little sassy today. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll have to order some wildflower seeds because I need to scatter the seed before um, it snows next so that the snow can soak it all down and it can do its thing like it's supposed to. We did get a little bit of bird seed and a bird feeder. Um, kind of hoping to make sure all the birds stay where I can see them from my blue chair, which is my most comfy favorite place to hang out early in the morning with my coffee at the moment. And so, yeah, so the wild bird seed didn't happen today. Um, and this one has been insane for a week. And so my hope is that she calms down and that we can find some seeds so we have lots of wildflowers this spring. Well, she finally used up all her energy today. And seriously, she was really busy today. I think I need to walk her a few laps around the property today. But there's your uh, parting buttercup is cute video. I think I'm going to do that on all my videos. Just do a little parting cute doggy picture. I spent all day long uh, fussing and playing with YouTube video stuff. And I decided that it's really cold and I want some comfort food, so I'm going to make some lovely potato soup. Right under there is a vent, floor vent, so anytime I'm cooking, Buttercup of course wants to sit right there, even though it's at my primary work station, um, but she loves laying there when the vent comes on. I am using the basic Better Homes and, Homes and Garden vegetable soup recipe. It's lovely, and I know it'll work, and it's super simple. And of course, waiting for water to boil is not the most fun, but just so happens I haven't been home much today and my kitchen is a little crowded and busy with debris. So this is a perfect chance for me to do a quick cleanup so that once dinner is served, all I'll have is our bowls and our lovely potatoes. Well, we're taking a pause for a potty break because little Miss Thing wants to go run around out in the snow and bark at the neighbors. This is one of our many, many projects right now. She's just got a little temporary fence, which it works. I mean, it's, uh, it's fine. I just can't, it's not going to keep anything out of here, and we have stray dogs every once in a while I see go by so we definitely want a fence that will not only keep her little butt in but also uh, keep the uh, whoever else doesn't lock their critters up out and you can't see much of the property <laughs> since it's dark but you know what are, what are you doing are you awake now Good. Oh, yeah? Okay, so Buttercup's awake now. Her picture I took earlier of her taking a nice deep sleep is officially over. She is now high speed again. <laughs> She's not really used to the noises of the house yet. And so it's not uncommon for her to hear a slight little creak in the house somewhere. And then she spends the next hour looking for the boogeyman. But anyway, she's awake now. <laughs> so.
So my niece and my sister got me this super cute teapot and then these tea drops. I like them, more or less. They're definitely to put in a pot of tea, not so much a cup because it's pretty strong. But it is definitely a nice flavor that's already kind of put together and lovely. I think what I've decided I like best about those little tea drops is I could get the same lovely little pot of tea in um, out camping. Like I could have one of those little metal coffee pot things that people use camping and it would work just as fine and I could get exactly the same cup of tea. And so, I don't know, I kind of like the idea. Um, I don't know that I will use them every single day because generally I like uh, not necessarily sweet tea because a lot of these I've tried are fairly sweet, but it's really nice and it's kind of a treat kind of thing to me. So our potatoes are boiling and the recipe said to boil them until they're soft, which they're just getting soft. So I'm going to go ahead and take them off the heat and finish up what it says in the recipe book. And if anybody is wondering, yes, I hand wash the dishes with a dishwasher. He's got a little bit of a leak, and I, we've got more important things to fix around here than a leaky dishwasher, especially when two days' worth of dishes doesn't even fill it up once. I can just hand wash real quick. So there's my soup, and it's funny because I showed you what book and where I got the recipe from, but in reality, I change it so much, it's kind of silly. For one, I mean, it's a cream of potato soup, but I like it like really hearty, so it's not, it's just kind of like a really creamy potato soup, not so much a uh, um, cream of potato soup. And then, here in a minute, I'm going to sear a couple of small ham, or a ham steak, and put big ham chunks in there. And what else did I do different? Oh, it calls for onion, and I don't uh, like onion particularly, now there's my husband, so we, but I know that sometimes it's good for recipes, so I actually have a thing of dried onion flakes. Um... I don't know, I guess the only part of what I use is the quantities of the main ingredients for that recipe. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to let these guys sear up really nice so they're crispy and lovely. And most of that fat is melted off. So they'll be a lovely, um, kind of crispy, almost bacony counter counterpoint to the uh, um, potato soup. And I'll tell you what, I have always cooked on gas stoves. And I have had the darndest time with the slower heat up and cool down. I've burned the bottoms of several things because I forgot that electric takes forever to cool off. Um, but this stove works great, so we're not going to replace it until it dies on me because that would, that would be a complete waste, but it's definitely been a learning curve for me. And I just found a new reason to really like the tea drops. I totally forgot that I made myself a pot of tea, but since there's not specific steeping times required, the tea is still hot, and so I can still have a nice cup of tea without it um, being oversteeped and bitter or anything like that, which I have a habit of forgetting I'm making myself tea, and so I don't consume it, and then it's bitter and no longer yummy. So that's the good thing about those. There you go. There's my vi version of uh, potato soup. It's not quite a creamy uh, cream of potato soup, but it's more like a, oops, sorry. <laughs> it's more like a nice, hearty, chunks of ham potato soup that's nice and creamy. And um, it's 
something like this to me is just absolutely perfect during the winter and for with just two of us in the house it'll be you know a couple meals with some leftovers and that'll be nice buttercup are we done cooking for the night are you done helping me are you you're such a good girl all right i'm signing off folks you have a beautiful evening